Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd, Allahu Akbar kabira, walhamdulillahi kathira, وسبحان الله العظيم بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى محمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وعصيلة الحمد لله الذي أنعم علينا بنعمة الإسلام وكفى بها نعمة أحمده تعالى وأشكره على آلائه أثنى عليه بما هو أهله وأسلم, وأسلم على نبيه وحيرته من خلقه سيد ولد آدم ولا فخر محمد صفوة أنبيائه وإمام رسله وآله الأطهار وصابه الأخيار we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this day, the day of Eid al-Fitr al-Mubarak, the day of thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings of the month of Ramadan. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity given us to participate in this month, the month of guidance, the month of mercy, the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dedicated purposely for the mercy that he bestowed upon the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear respected brothers and sisters in faith, this is the time we need to thank Allah for this opportunity that he gave us. We need to thank Allah and make zikr and make shukr so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our deeds. It is said in this month, on this day of Eid, when we leave our houses, we start the takbirat by saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. This is what we say coming from our houses all the way to the musalla. When we come to the musalla and sit down, we continue this takbirat until the prayer. When we finish the prayer heading home, we continue the takbirat and as sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the way in which you came to the prayer, you change another way going back home. We thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for giving us this day. Dear respected brothers and sisters in faith, this is the day we need to reflect whatever happened through us the month of Ramadan. How did we go? What did we do? What are the things that we've achieved? We need to start reflecting because in the month of Ramadan, we took advantage of the month to train ourselves. Which training? How did we achieve the training? What comes after that? So those are the things that we need to start pondering upon. When, the, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said regarding fasting, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ he made mention the reason behind it, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّكُونَ Have we attained the piety? Ask yourself, what have you learned out of the month of Ramadan? What have you achieved in the month of Ramadan? So these are the time that we need to reflect. These are the time we need to start asking the question. But our focus now is going to base on the youth. 
Because if we are to attain piety, our lifestyle, our action will serve accordingly. I remembered one of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he was traveling with one of his companions. As a young boy, he was telling him, Ya Ghulam, oh boy, this hadith, when we look at it, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has directed us and drawn our attention on how to see how Iman works. When you fear Allah, when you are mindful to Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will be with you. This is the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to this companion of his. He said, fear Allah, be mindful of Allah, Allah will be there for you. And also, Iza sa'alta fas'alillah. Anything that you want in your life, do not ask anybody, but ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have this connection, you only believe in Allah, you only ask Allah, you will not have fear of any individual. The reason why we have concern, what we say in public, what we say in a group of people, what we say outside, is because we don't have connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're scared when people hear what we say, they will not give us what we want from them. As a Muslim, you do not need anything from anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is your provider. Allah is your provider. You don't need anything from anybody. So this connection that we lose, we don't have that direct connection with our Creator. We always have individuals to put between us and Allah. We come to the prayer, we are telling Allah, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْعِينَ Oh Allah, you we worship. We are talking to him direct. We are asking for his protection. And we come out seeking our sustenance from any individual. Where is the Iman? So the Prophet said, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ When you need any support, when you need to request, request from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ بِاللَّهِ If you are seeking for protection, seek for protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala direct us with this. He said, even when we are going to recite Quran, فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانُ الرَّجِيمِ Come to Allah, ask Allah to be your protector. And always we remind each other, this is something that we do miss. We don't have that connection with Allah. We do put barriers between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have ma'iyah, when you have connection with Allah, nothing can harm you. Wallahi. If you have connection with Allah, nothing can harm you. This is the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Abu Bakr was looking, when they were in Ghari Thawr, he has concern, these people can get us, they are very close to us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asking him, مَا ذَنُّكَ بِثْنَيْنِ اللَّهُ ثَالِثُهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا What do you think of the two? That Allah is their third. Allah is with us. Which means if we, we are with Allah, we don't have fear. So these are the things that we need to do. We need to ask our protection only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu continued to advise this young man. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ كَتْكَتَبُ اللَّهُ لَكْ No, you boy, if people, the nation are to come together, they're going to do something to benefit you. The Prophet sallallahu said, no, wallahi, they cannot do anything to benefit you except what Allah has already written for you. In that case, if you understand anything that you get in your life is from Allah, why will you have fear of any individual? And the same thing goes to, if they are to come together, لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ كَتْكَتَبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ If they are also going to come together, 
to do something to harm you, wallahi, they cannot do anything to harm you except what Allah has already ordained. This hadith is referring us to another hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was referring in this hadith by saying, Inna ahadakum yujmau khalquhu fi batni ummihi arba'ina yawman nutfatan thumma yakunu alakatan mitna thalik thumma yakunu mudghatan mitna thalik thumma yursali ilayhi al-malak fayanfahu fihi al-ruha wa yu'umaru bi arba'i kalimatin bi katibi al-rizkihi ajalihi shaqiyin amis sa'id fa wallahi alladhi la ilaha ghayru inna ahadakum laya amalu bi amali ahali al-janna hatta ma yakunu baynahu wa baynaha illa al-vira fa yasbiku alayhi al-kitab fa ya amalu bi amali ahali al-nari fa yadukuluha wa inna ahadakum laya amalu bi amali ahali al-nari hatta ma yakunu baynahu wa baynaha illa al-vira fa yasbiku alayhi al-kitab fa ya amalu bi amali ahali al-janna fa yadukuluha this is the saying of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Everything regarding our life is already written. No rush. No one will take what Allah has written for you. No one is going to stop the sustenance Allah has produced for you. Because رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامُ وَجَفَّتِ الصُّحُ The pen that is used to write your deed has finished writing. The paper that the deeds are written is already dried. Nothing is going to be added on. Nothing is going to be reduced. So don't fear any human. Believe in Allah. Connect with Allah. Only listen to yourself between you and Allah. Whatever you do, ask yourself, this thing that I'm going to do, is Allah happy with it or not? Because we are coming out of madrasa, we are coming out of school, everyone is going to be giving something that we call your shahada, your certificate will be given to you in the month of Ramadan, what you've achieved. You want to be among those who will come on the day of Qiyamah. They are calling people, ha umukara'u kitabiya, come and read my book because they are proud of it. Or will you be among the people who are running away from each other? Dear respected brothers and sisters in faith, this is our call. Let's revive our iman. And let's connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قول هذا واستكر الله العظيم لي ونفس صلى الله عليه وسلم. When Abu Bakr was looking when they were in Ghari Thawr, he has concern. These people can get us. They are very close to us. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is asking him, ما ذنك باثنين الله ثالثهم إن الله معنا. What do you think of the two? that Allah is their third. Allah is with us, which means if we, we are with Allah, we don't have fear. So these are the things that we need to do. We need to ask our protection only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu continued to advise this young man, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لم ينفعوك إلا بشيء قد كتب الله لك. No, you boy, if people, the nation are to come together, they're going to do something to benefit you. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, No, wallahi, they cannot do anything to benefit you except what Allah has already written for you. In that case, if you understand anything that you get in your life is from Allah. Why will you have fear of any individual? And the same thing goes to, if they are to come together, If they are also going to come together to do something to harm you, Wallahi, they cannot do anything to harm you except what Allah has already ordained. This hadith, is referring us to another hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was referring in this hadith by saying, Inna ahadakum yujmau khalquhu fi batni ummihi arba'ina yawman nutfatan thumma yakunu alakatan mitna thalik thumma yakunu mudghatan mitna thalik thumma yursali ilayhi al-malak fayanfahu fihi al-ruha wa yu'umaru bi arba'i kalimatin 
بكتب رزقه أجله شقي أم الصعيد فوالله الذي لا إله غيره إن أحدكم لا يأمل بأمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيأمل بأمل أهل النار فيدخلها وإن أهدكم لا يأمل بأمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا الذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيأمل بأمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها This is the saying of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Everything regarding our life is already written. No rush. No one will take what Allah has written for you. No one is going to stop the sustenance Allah has produced for you. Because The pen that is used to write your deed has finished writing. The paper that the deeds are written is already dried. Nothing is going to be add on. Nothing is going to be reduced. So don't fear any human. Believe in Allah. Connect with Allah. Only listen to yourself between you and Allah. Whatever you do, ask yourself, this thing that I'm going to do, is Allah happy with it or not? Because we are coming out of madrasa, we are coming out of school, everyone is going to be given something that we call your shahada, your certificate will be given to you in the month of Ramadan, what you've achieved. You want to be among those who will come on the day of Qiyamah. They are calling people, ha umukara'u kitabiyah, come and read my book because they are proud of it. Or will you be among the people who are running away from each other? Dear respected brothers and sisters in faith, this is our call. Let's revive our iman. And let's connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستكفروا الله العظيم لي ولكم من كل ذنب والخطيئة فاستكفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم والبر الكريم الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والعرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون هو الذي خلقكم من طين ثم خضاء أجل وأجل مسمى عنده ثم أنتم تمترون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه Dear respected brothers and sisters in faith In our life we live, we learn, we have what we call our daily lifestyle when you have something that you do every single day it becomes a habit a habit is something that you do often now brothers and sisters in faith you got one whole month reading quran praying at night pardoning people having patience this habit that you plant is it from today you're gonna leave it aside or you want to keep it all your life because you've learned something. That is the idea of Ramadan being a madrasa. The certificate that you got is to bear witness that you got taqwa. You got taqwa because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that. Inna wa Allah's promise definitely is going to happen. Allah has given you opportunity. A whole month you were reading Quran. You were praying at night. You were sharing your food. Doing good deeds. Giving sadaqah. Is that mean that today is the last day of that? Your books or your Quran going back to the shelves? Is that it? You leave the masjid for the Imam and the Muazzin? Is that it? You are done with good deeds? Or you've learned something that you're going to continue with it? So this is our call, brothers and sisters in faith. What is after Ramadan? What do I do after Ramadan? What have I learned out of the month of Ramadan? In Ramadan, if someone upset me, someone made me angry, someone want to cause issue, I tell the person in Nisa Imun, I am fasting. Because I'm fasting, I'm not fighting you. I'm not going to insult you. I'm not going to curse you. In Ramadan, if someone come to me and ask for help, I'm rushing to do good. In Ramadan, I listen to the Quran, I read the Quran. Now, Ramadan is gone. That's it. 
that is not the case, brothers and sisters in faith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us, one day Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and said, Ya Muhammad, anyone that was alive saw his parents or one of his parents alive and he did not obey them, respect them to the extent Allah becomes so happy with him and reward him with Jannah, may Allah curse him. Ya Muhammad, anyone that is in a gathering and someone mentioned your name and the person did not send salutation to you, may Allah curse him. Ya Muhammad, anyone that leaves, Allah give the person opportunity to see Ramadan and the person did not take advantage to obey Allah and worship Allah for Allah to be pleased with him and give him Jannah, may Allah curse him. Dear respected brothers and sisters and sisters in Islam, have we benefited from this? Have we got the taqwa? Check inside you, you will know. If you are a person who have a bad character, you are waiting after Ramadan to go back to eat, Wallahi, your fasting has not gone anywhere. If you are a person who has a questionable character, you are waiting, looking forward to see the end of Ramadan, to go back to that habit, it means your Ramadan has not benefited you. If it is beneficial, you are trying to ask yourself, can I be like Dawood alayhi salam? If I cannot fast every single day after Ramadan, why can't I fast every second day? So this is the call. We've learned something in the month of Ramadan. Let's keep the habit. Let's continue. Let's keep the unity. Let's keep doing good. This is the call of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the ummah together. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anywhere on the planet, wherever Muslims, non-Muslims are in hardship, Ya Allah, make it easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring peace for our people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring peace for our people. In all this, remind yourself and remind your family, don't forget Sister Shawwal. Don't forget Sister Shawwal. Do as much as you can. With that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our deed. Ala usalli wa usallim ala rasulina Muhammad. Haitha amaran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi muhkami tanzili. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala Muhammad. Warham Muhammad. Wa ala Muhammad. Wa barik ala Muhammad. Wa ala Muhammad. كما صليت ورحمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورد اللهم على الهلفاء الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن بقية الصحابة والتابعين وتابع التابعين وتابعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وأنا معهم وفيهم برحمة يا رحم الراحمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم أرينا الحق حق وارزقنا التباء وأرينا الباطل باطل وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم إز الإسلام والمسلمين وأزل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعدائك أعداء الدين وجعل أموالهم وأولادهم غنيمة للمسلمين واكتب السلامة والعافية لجميع المسلمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتائز القربى وينهى عن الفشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يذركم ولا ذكر الله أولى وأكبر we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deed. Eid al-Mubarak wa kullu amin wa antum bi khair. Eid is here. Yes, I can feel all the joy and happiness throughout the year. Allah's blessings on everyone. Pleasing all the daughters, pleasing all the sons. Eid is here, so make the world a chance for all to celebrate. This joy I feel cannot be concealed, it must be shared to end despair. Allah's fortune for you and I shall be the
discovered without deny. Come one, come all, come together and heed the call. It is here, yes, I can feel.